In this Easy Ed video lecture, we will take a look at centroid and center of gravity, wherein we are going to learn about centroid of lines, regular lines, and wire bends. We will also learn to find the centroid by integration. We will also learn about a few applications of center of gravity. Previously, we have learned to find the centroid of plane areas. Now, we will learn to locate the centroid of lines and wire bends which are also geometrical figures. Lines can be defined as one-dimensional figures whose length L is more prominent than its thickness B. Also thickness is uniform throughout the length. We will now recall the relations used to find the coordinates of centroid of a plane area. Thus we can derive a relation for X bar, the X coordinate of the centroid of lines in terms of the individual lengths of the parts and their respective x coordinates. Similarly, we derive the relation for the y coordinate of the centroid y bar. The relations 1 and 2 are used to locate the centroid g of a wire bend having coordinates x bar, y bar. The table given shows the centroids of regular lines. Consider a straight horizontal line of length L. Hence, its centroid would have its x coordinate as L by 2 and y coordinate as 0. Next, we will consider an inclined line of length L using Pythagoras theorem. We can find the projections of the line on the x axis that is A and on the y axis that is B. Thus, the centroid would have its x coordinate as A by 2 and y coordinate as B by 2. Next, let us consider a semicircular arc of radius r with the coordinate axis lying at the center. Hence, its length would be equal to pi r. Also, its centroid would have its x coordinate as 0 and y coordinate as 2r upon pi. The coordinates x bar, y bar of the centroid g are with respect to the axis shown in the respective figures. These formulae form the base to find the centroid of wire bends and are hence deemed important. A wire bend can be obtained by adding up a number of regular lines. To locate the centroid of a wire bend, we simply divide it into simple regular lines. Find their centroids and then use the relations given above to find the centroid of the wire bend. Let us now take a look at some solved problems. Consider the following problem. A uniform wire is bent into a shape as shown in the figure. Calculate the position of the center of gravity of the wire. The wire bend can be obtained by adding two straight positions AB and CD, adding a semicircular portion BC and adding a straight inclined portion DE. The centroids of the four parts can be marked using the basic formulae for regular lines. We will now mark the centroids of these four parts G1, G2, G3 and G4 as shown. We will now tabulate the values of the four parts. The lengths and the coordinates of centroids of the different parts are first entered in the table. Add up the lengths of the different parts to get the total length. Add up the product of length and x coordinate of different parts to obtain its summation. Adding up the product of length and y coordinate of different parts to obtain summation. Using these two formulae, we can find that x coordinate and the y coordinate of the centroid of the wire bend. Thus, the centroid of the bent up wire has coordinates minus 47.12, 44.74 in millimeters. Seriously, pay attention. This is important. For some figures bounded by curves, we use the integration approach to find the centroid. A plane area bounded by a curve which is defined by the equation y equals fx is shown. To find the centroid, let's take a vertical elemental rectangular strip of very small width dx. Let xy be a point on the curve just over the elemental strip. The height of the strip is y. Area of elemental strip dA equals y into dx. Let the coordinates of the centroid of the element be xel and yel. 
if x bar and y bar are the coordinates of centroid of the entire plane area then we can use the following relations to find them using integration. The following problem helps us to understand the method to find centroid of an area by using integration. Consider the plane area given. Determine its centroid. Let us first take an elemental vertical strip of width dx. Let xy be a point on the curve just above the elemental strip. The height of the strip is y and its area that is dA equals y into dx. Hence, the total area under the curve can be found by integrating the area of the strip. The area within which dx can move is from 0 to 250 millimeters. Hence, these are the limits used for integration. Thus, the total area is found to be 15915.5 millimeter square. If x el and y el are the coordinates of the centroid of the element, then x el is equal to x and y el is equal to y by 2. Next, we will integrate the product of the area of the strip and its x coordinate about the same limits used previously. On evaluating this integral by the product rule and then applying the limits, we find the integral to be equal to. Similarly, we will integrate the product of the area of the strip and its y coordinate about the same limits. On evaluating this integral by the product rule and then applying the limits, we find the integral to be equal to. Using these two formulae, we can find the x coordinate and the y coordinate of the plane area. Thus, the centroid of the plane area has coordinates. Hey, it's time to concentrate now. Now we will learn about some application of center of gravity. In order to analyze certain engineering problems, we must find the location of center of gravity. Any vehicle should be designed in such a way that its center of gravity is at a minimum distance from the ground so that tipping off the vehicles is avoided while driving across curved roads at high speed. A dam is a structure built across a river to store water. A dam is designed in such a way that the center of gravity lies within the middle, one-third of the base of the dam. If the center of gravity goes beyond the middle one-third, the dam may lose its stability and collapse. Let's have a quick review of what we studied in this lecture. We first learned to locate the centroid of lines and wire bends. Then, we derived the equations to find the coordinates of centroid of a wire bend by dividing it into small parts. Next, we learned about centroid of regular lines. The table given shows the centroids of regular lines. The table gives us the lengths x and y coordinates of the centroid of basic lines like straight horizontal line, inclined line and semicircular arc. Then we learned about wire bends. A wire bend can be obtained by adding up a number of regular lines. To locate the centroid of a wire bend, we simply divide it into simple regular lines, find their centroids and then use the relations given above to find the centroid of the wire bend. Then. We learn to find the centroid of an area using integration. For some figures bounded by curves, we use the integration approach to find the centroid. If x and y are the coordinates of centroid of the entire plane area, then we can use the following relations to find them using integration. Finally, we learned about some applications of center of gravity. Any vehicle should be designed in such a way that its center of gravity is at a minimum distance from the ground so that tipping off the vehicles is avoided while negotiating curves at high speed. A dam is designed in such a way that the center of gravity lies within the middle one-third of the base of the dam. If the center of gravity goes beyond the middle one-third, the dam may lose its stability and collapse.